Welcome to Cool Explorations. I am your host, Tony Peters. Today we're going to be discussing Revelation 13, and we'll be taking a look at this from The Gospel by Mike O'Dowd. And Revelation 13 acts as a bit of a division between two sections of Revelation. And we've seen God's wrath unleashed upon the earth before this, and Satan has enjoyed his allowed time of rule over the earth. And now we're right before the moment when Satan's time will come to an end. Jesus, as promised by the Messiah, is going to return riding on a white horse. Jesus is our conqueror. And first, there is this uneasy prelude to this event. Great stories that endure long enough to become classics, they tend to have this message that really resonates with our souls. They tend to also follow a particular pattern which the Bible also follows. Given the lordship of God over all time, creation, history, powers, principalities, and, and so much more, you know, we're, we should be really prone to look at the Bible and God's revelation to us through his word as setting a pattern for great stories rather than following a pattern. In other words, great stories tend to have a message that resonates with our souls because they follow the pattern of the greatest story ever told. By the way of a reminder, the pattern looks something like this. The story begins with a setting where the hero and the hero's desired conditions are prevailing. The hero is good and so are his or her conditions, but then a villain appears on the scene with an agenda. And that agenda, just like Satan's agenda, is to disrupt or destroy the hero and the hero's conditions so the prevailing conditions conform to the villain's will. And Satan shows this when he says in Genesis 3.1, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? This intrusion of the villain just goes to show us, you know, he's coming onto the scene and he, he's introducing conflict and into this great story uh, as Satan is doing. And then the question is, you know, how will the story play out? And we have that question when the Bible starts. And today we're going to be looking at part of, of that conclusion right in Revelation 13. And you have to wonder, will the hero recover his or her footing or prevail? Or will the hero rise victorious over everything that is good so that his or her uh, dastardly will or wishes become a new reality, reality for everybody. Uh, to the latter outcome, as Paul was found of writing in his letters, or fond of writing in his letters, he says, may it never be. Uh, and since we can look at it from that uh, perspective and we can see Satan's will here as he is trying to disrupt things, we really need to take a look at the fact that Satan lacks creativity. It's so obvious in every part of scripture how much creativity he lacks. This is why he has to always copy God's work. And he's always trying to copy things that God does just in a dark form of it. He can't come up with anything new. This has been an effective way of fooling even Christians into following what Satan asks, which is probably why he does it. He, he, a, he lacks creativity, and secondly, it's just a dark version of the reality, and so Christians and many people are just deceived by it because they can't see. They don't have that biblical foundation that they need to see the truth through the darkness, that light shining forth. Uh, he, Satan is compared to a serpent, uh, and he, it will say serpents all have a forked tongue. And this is an important part of the, the serpent um, comparison here, because the description is so apt. His words lead to a fork in the road for all of us, whether Christian or non-Christian. We must decide to listen to the words of the serpent, or the words of the Holy Spirit. Satan is cunning and he knows 
how to play on our weaknesses, which is exactly why we need to be strong and have a firm grasp on the Bible and be in constant prayer to, with God and, and what God has to say and to teach us through the Bible. We need to know those things. We need to know the words of the Bible so we know the truth. We must keep our prayer life strong and communication flowing with God, being sure to spend time in quiet stillness, listening for God's guidance. Spend time faithfully attending church, speaking with your pastor, with elders, mentors, uh, being in fellowship with other believers. These are all important aspects of our defense system against the, the deceptions of Satan. We must put on our full armor of God. Unless people are themselves truly evil, something in our souls is deeply provoked when evil prevails. Something unbeknownst to us has to be in the works to undo this great injustice. But why do we feel this way? Perhaps because we are made in the image of the author of the greatest story ever told. Even though that image has been marred by our sin, in most of us, there is enough of a spark to still sense what is good on the basis of what the author of the greatest story ever told declares to be good. Without God, we would have no way of picking out what is good and what is evil. Without a God, we could do whatever we wanted, all of our sinful desires. And that would lead to such a chaotic world as we are seeing today with all the death, all the dis disruption everywhere, the people not being willing to talk to each other, to listen to each other. People can't have a non-heated discussion on opposing views and we see all the hate spread everywhere and as Christians we need to be above that we need to be above reproach we need to be following what God wants us to be in John 19 28 to 30 as Jesus is hanging upon the cross John records after this Jesus knowing that all was now finished said to fulfill the scripture I thirst a jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. To Telestai, it is finished. On the third day after his crucifixion, as we know, the grave did not have the power to keep him there. He rose victorious over sin and death. But to most of the watching world and his followers, defeat and hopelessness hung heavy in the air. On this very same day of Jesus' resurrection, two of Jesus' followers described their feelings in this way. Our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Luke 24, 20 to 21. We had hoped. Jeez. Just that lack, that moment that we all have where our faith wavers. And we see that. Revelation 13. Just take a look at that. Read Revelation 13. And just take a look at how much power... Satan has in those final end of days. And then remember, he's going to lose that power. He's going to lose everything. And Satan will be locked up, as we will see as we continue in, in the next sections here. Um, I hope you'll continue listening in the, in the future podcasts. Uh, Jesus conquered death. He rose again after three days. He, he defeated death, and this is something Satan is going to mimic again. And Jesus Christ met every requirement for the predicted and promised Savior, the Messiah. 
This is why in Acts we saw the explosion of the church. This is also why the church grew. So did the opposition against the church. As the church grows, so does the opposition. And that's a model we've seen throughout history. Whenever there's persecution, the church grows. Which is why I think we are in so much trouble here in North America and in Europe. There's been a lack of persecution. And as we start seeing just the just a touch of persecution starting to creep in, that's going to test our faith. That should make us desire to be stronger in our faith, give us reason to dig into our Bible so we can hold firm and hold the line. Satan was very busy whispering in the ears of the rulers that Christians posed a threat to their control of the masses. He started this with, with Herod trying to kill Jesus when he was just born. There was that fear already. Satan knew he was in trouble and he wanted to do whatever he could to try and stop and foil the plans of God. But whatever he does always turns out to be something used for good by our good and holy God. Christians in this day, in many parts of the world and age, are still being persecuted for their faith. They've been persecuted to the point of death, torture. This persecution will look minor when compared to what the world can expect during the tribulation period. Christians will be hunted down in every corner of the earth. They will be executed and tortured. The pattern for persecution has not changed over the centuries though, and it will not change in the tribulation period because Satan lacks that creativity. Many people who call themselves Christians don't depend on Christ. They aren't forced into a greater fellowship as believers, which is what persecution does. It forces us to be dependent on our God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and it forces us into a greater relationship with other believers so that we can be united and hold strong together as Christians, as a body of Christ, recognizing that we all represent different parts of Jesus Christ and of our God to be used by God in many various forms. Many of us who call ourselves Christians We've become lazy in our faith. We've just become so complacent. We don't know strong persecution. And so we've become complacent and really our belief in our faith has become surface level. It's, it's shallow, which is easily uprooted and easily deceived by the devil. We need to begin relying not upon ourselves. We need to trust in God for everything. And that will stop the devil from being able to creep in and lead us astray so easily. It's a sad trend that we see in the church today. We must be strong in our faith. We must rely upon the Lord for our strength. And during the tribulation period, this strength will be seen in the new believers. The persecution that will endure will be tremendous. It will force them to turn to God for strength because he's the only one that they can draw to, that they can go closer to, and they can draw strength from other believers who can encourage them and help each other learn more about the triune God. This is an example we can use today. We can set that example for these people who are going to have to live through the tribulation period. Their hope will be in the wondrous return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the warrior king, who will come to bring his people home. When you look at the sad state of the world today, do you see a sense of despair? Just a sense of hopelessness? The sense that people are so shallow and empty right now. They have this void that they want to fill and they're filling it with all 
the wrong things. They aren't turning to where they should be turning, as we know that they should be doing. In this evil world, do you see an inevitable trajectory of victory in all things? If you feel this way, do you need to reconsider what you're looking at because evil will not get victory evil will not succeed if you feel that there is a sense of hopelessness there's a sense of despair maybe you should reconsider that we've already hit the climax of the greatest story ever told the hero has done everything already necessary to ensure that the villain will ultimately come to ruin. When Jesus said to Telestai, it is finished. Regardless of what Satan, his world, and his followers believe, and regardless of how much they seem to be prevailing, you should get this sense of hope. Jesus conquered death. He resurrected. He came back to life. And remember in Revelation 13, 1 to 10, we see Satan and his Antichrist will be worshipped. There'll be an adorning world that will say of his Antichrist, who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? This was verse 4. And then he goes on to write in 13, 5 to 7, John says, And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling. That is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. That's a pretty bleak picture that is painted here in Revelation. In the rest of Revelation 13, John goes on to describe how the Antichrist will be perceived as he works miracles, even seemingly mimicking the resurrection of Jesus Christ, again showing his lack of creativity, his lack of his ability to come up with anything fresh and new. He'll be a worldwide rock star with unlimited power and authority over the earth. But just remember, this is limited and is a short period of time before we see Christ return. The return of our king, or the return of the king, as we'll call the next segment, uh, as we see uh, our Lord of the Rings comparison there uh, so well uh, played out. Those who are here for the tribulation period uh, will see that once again, Satan lacks creativity. As I've said several times already, uh, I just want to hammer that home. We have, we should be protecting ourselves because he's not coming up with anything new. We should be able to look at it and be like, I've seen this before. God, please help me. Keep me from sin. Help me to follow Jesus Christ and his example. That should be our prayer. Satan will copy the wondrous miracles of Jesus. He'll even copy his death and resurrection, all in an effort to fool and deceive people into worshiping him. And sadly, most of the world will indeed fall for this act and listen to Satan, worshiping and shouting his praise. It's something we already see in our society. Uh, We've seen it for all throughout history we've seen it and that trend is is going to actually worsen in the end of times but there will be those who hold firm to jesus christ who turn to him and will be saved they will be saved right up until the last moment jesus comes to save us god will allow this time of rule for only a very short period of time in the very end as God has a purpose 
and he will defeat Satan and the Antichrist. They have no real power. God will only tolerate Satan's actions for a short period before his purpose and his plan is fulfilled. We are about to see the return of the true king. We're about to see the one who will sit at his father's right hand. Thank you for listening to Cool Explorations. You've just been listening to us talk about Revelation 13 from the Gospel by Mike O'Dowd. And really, what we can take from this is that we need to be strong. We need to live as if we are being persecuted, meaning have a faith that is unwavering. Share God's love, grace, and mercy with the world. Unashamedly declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Trust and know that he will return for his people. Be ready and be prepared for that wondrous moment when he calls his church home. Be prepared. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can do so at tpeters745 at gmail.com.